Welcome back to another Research Connection. Today I'm here with Dr. Santosh Mitra. He is an associate professor in our Department of Molecular Biomedical Sciences, and he's going to talk today about his research in chronic itch and pain. So a good bit of your research focuses on chronic itch and pain, which we can temporarily treat and topically treat, but we don't know a ton about molecularly. Um, so where, where are the similarities with chronic itch and pain, and, and why is it important to study them on a cellular level? Yeah, so that's a, that's a very good question. Um, so we definitely have some topical uh, treatment for chronic itch, and, uh, but if you think about itch, um, um, so this topical application is usually to treat the disease, but not the itch. And itch can aggravate the disease because you scratch that the area where you feel that itchy sensation. So there is almost, I would say, there is no treatment for, for chronic itch. And so understanding these molecular uh, uh, mechanisms that help us to identify the targets that we can actually uh, uh, treat then itch um, uh, in, in conjunctions with the, with the uh, topical treatments that can actually relieve the disease. Now, the question about the, the molecules that, that play an important role here, and a lot of these molecules are actually share the similarities in the sense that if you think about pain, for example, so there are pain drugs available in the market, but some of these drugs, like opioid, I can give that an example because that's uh, uh, um, bringing a lot of crisis at this point of time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those opioids are good for treating pain, but the side effect of that is it causes chronic itching. So, uh -huh. so that's why if we know these pathways or the mechanism in the mo at the molecular level, we can yeah. probably define uh, or identify better targets to treat these uh, uh, like pain and itch. Um, and what discoveries and projects have you um, and your lab done so far and um, what are you currently working on too to address some of these issues? Yes, yeah, so, so we, I started from understanding the acute uh, pain and itch, but now in my lab we study chronic itch and pain because we understand mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a huge problem because we don't have really therapeutics to, uh, uh, to treat chronic itch and pain. So, um, so we have two uh, independent uh, 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 like, you know, project grants that mm -hmm. studies uh, focuses on itch and pain. So for itch, we actually identify the targets. So when, when I say about target, I mean like, you know, just not the, the signaling molecules that actually binds to the receptor because mm -hmm. again, like, you know, there are like tons of these <laughs> like, you know, uh, circuits actually at the, at the neural level mm -hmm. happening. So you have these signals that binds to the receptors, mm -hmm. and these receptors are expressed on the sensory neurons. And then you, these sensory neurons, they release these neurotransmitter, which then communicate with the, like, you know, the other neurons mm -hmm. and to communicate the message to the, to the highest centers, such, such as spinal cord and the brain. However, these same neuropeptides can also actually talk back in the, in the joints, for example, for oh, pain wow. and uh, uh, in the skin for edge. So, so we basically focus on all these three different targets mm -hmm. to identify that and to understand the mechanism because if we understand the mechanism, we can probably treat them better. Yeah. And so you've brought a model to show us a little bit more. Can you explain um, where the different targets are and, and what? Sure. So, so I brought this, like, you know, I use this model um, uh, for my teaching class as well. And actually, the, the basically to tell how, how this, the whole this this mechanism works actually like for example let's say i'll talk about itch mm -hmm. and this is actually very similar in pain happens so we have these like you know this is the the bulge part here this is the dorsal root ganglia this is the peripheral nervous system the ganglia these 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 threads here these are the fibers that are going in and, and integrating into the spinal cord and then from here it goes up to the brain mm. so this is basically when we call it the sending pathway where how okay. this we actually perceive pain and itch at the brain level. But then the, these neurons, these have the same fiber that going into the joints and in the skin where we mm. detect this. So basically the pain and itch is, is based, detected, uh, uh, happening at four different places. First is the detection part. Mm -hmm. So I call it detection because you detect it and then you transmit that part. So this is a transmission part that happens upward 
but that can also happen backward where it can actually sensitize the same thing like you know we you heard about like you know pain sensitization yeah, or each yeah. sensitization so that is happening this backward process and if we talk about upward so this this transmitter goes into the spinal cord and then from here it actually goes to the brain mm -hmm. when we perceive this and and that is even more complex because this can like you know regulate at different levels so you heard about like you know sometimes stress can aggravate pain right, and, right. and itch so that is happening at the brain level so in addition to your own scientific research, you've done a number of collaborations on NIH grants and such with our veterinary clinicians and their research. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of comparative medicine, especially on a veterinary campus like this? Yeah. Yes, you, you brought a great point actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say the, the comparative medicine plays an important and significant role in uh, biological discovery or biomedical mm -hmm. discoveries. And uh, by saying that, I meant uh, for like, for example, by simply comparing the similarities and differences between healthy and disease conditions in humans mm -hmm. and animal research will help us to understand the mechanisms at more mm -hmm. better level. And also by understanding the mechanism, we probably potentially identify different targets that can be eventually help us to uh, 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 develop some therapeutic targets. So I think um, the comparative medicine plays an important role. And also talking about like, you know, one health medicine, for example. Right. So hopefully by this, we can mm -hmm. actually, we can find something working in our friends, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the dog in the back here, yeah. itching. So if you find an itching target, like, you know, the medicine for this, we can potentially um, will be useful for the human condition as well.